what I thought made me win, I would say it's simplicity. And it's more like an encouragement to so many other youths that want to get on the agriculture value chain. What I, what I thought made me win, I would say it's simplicity. And it's more like an encouragement to so many other youths that want to get on the agriculture we, are, we work on the fruit and vegetable value chain. So tomatoes, cucumber, cabbages, carrots, uh, uh, watermelon, we do all of this. And also, we're also looking at doing uh, staple crops like rice and uh, maize in the future. Soybeans, uh, really healthy, nutritious crops uh, to work with. So the major aim and objective of creating the IUTA event in the first place is to actually discover and help to catalyze innovation that's coming from young Nigerians uh, that can help solve major pain points of smallholder farmers in the country. So eventually we're looking at um, the innovation that can actually help solve problems that we currently face as a country, especially among the smallholder farmers, was the main criteria. We have a structured supply chain. At the moment, we have a cold room where we store the produce that we collect from the farmers, tomatoes and the likes of that are stored in cold room. And collecting the produce from the farmers, they're handled in proper crating system. Our crates are tagged with RFID, uh, RFD tags to be able to uh, give all the data that we want to put into the crate itself, like in the basket. So it tells all the information. And then when we collect the produce properly stacked, properly handled in a, a cold truck, down to the cold room, then down to the, to the um, customer that we deliver. So working in a creating system, so when we, we started working with farmers, we were going there, and we, we had to work with raffia basket. Raffia basket causes about 34% of post-harvest losses because it's, it's not just good for the condition of your tomatoes and some other, some other delicate uh, vegetables. So we had to create a creating system and we were giving it to the farmers to work with. When you are done with your harvest, um, Mr. Damola, harvest this and put in the crate, then we come and collect. But you know when it comes to operations and supply chain, sometimes things start getting missing and you know you have to put a structure system in place to make sure that you're still profitable with whatever you're introducing to the farmer. So the RFID is like, I'm tagging this crate. Each time I've, I kept, I'm keeping it with Mr. Adjuste, Mr. Damola, I know where the crates are. So I can trace the crate and say it's with, it's with this person. And when it gets arrested and returned to the, uh, our the collection center, we're also able to trace it. So you just give the identity to the crate and whatever produce is stored in it. So Hyper International is a global development organization and it's uh, headquartered in the United States of America. But I also have been around for over 78 years, implementing projects across many continents in the Africas, in Americas, and also in Asia as well. And uh, we've also been in Africa, in some of these African countries for more than 80, 48 years. And within that period, we've worked in about 11 to 12 African countries, but currently have active programs in 10 African countries. So I have first vision for 2020 to 2030 is to say, okay, we've been able to work all these years, we've, we've helped to live out of poverty, more than 36 million um, household. The idea is that it's not just to do programs to impact people's life. If I work with what we call the, the living income benchmark. So we go to a community, we see what's the living income there. What will it cost a farmer or a household to live a good life, to afford food, to afford shelter, to afford education, to afford health care? And how much are they currently making now? So what they need to make, and what we, the work we do is how to get them to that point of what they need to make to live a good life within where they live. Uh, data to get market ready for the farmer before traveling down to the farmer's gate, uh, collect the produce from the farmers, and pay the farmers directly, immediately, a better price. So having do, doing that, we also collect all the data about the food, how it was grown, what fertilizer was used, what seeds, what pesticide, for how long... Uh, they've harvested for how long it will travel and all of that bundled in a QR code. So with the QR code and produce, we deliver to the, off, the off taker. So if you scan the QR code, it tells you all the information about the food. The food is traceable. It's a transparent system. Also, it also gives the farmer identity. So you don't just like, we want to buy tomatoes. You know that Ms. tomatoes is from Mr. Adjuste. Mr. Adjuste is so, so, so years old. He's based in so, so, so place and has certain, you know, it's so, some sort of social inclusion for those farmers. Certain values are communicated that makes farmers also feel like they're part of a growing society. So to solve um, the problem that we see in the country, it requires a lot of collaborative effort. So there have been many organizations in Nigeria in the past that have tried to address this issue. And it, it's not about just one person. It's an ecosystem 
that require all the necessary players to be in place so we can, use, so we can resolve the problem. So AFA International is collaborating with, um, importantly, government. Government policies, um, enabling environment from the government, government participation, government focus area and priority, it's very, very important to solve any issue within the country. So AFA International prioritizes partnership and collaboration with government. And also we prioritize partnership and collaboration with the private sector. Because private sector are the ones that will actually drive the kind of transformation that we want to see uh, in the country and also that can drive a sustainable kind of um, 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 transformation where it's more uh, commercially driven and it's one that can function within the market system ecosystem beyond just um, bringing in uh, donor funding or philanthropic support and think that will change or transform the thing. Okay, so uh, what, I, what I thought made me win, I would say it's simplicity. And it's more like an encouragement to so many other youths that want to get on the agriculture value chain. Your solution can be as simple and as, uh, sometimes they say dumb friendly, as simple as it can be. The point is, is it actually solving a problem? And how important is that problem that it's solving? So the solution is uh, just like you said, it's not something very like uh, too serious, like an application and then using geodata and the likes of that. It's as simple as what would work with the smallholder farmers. So more youths that want to get into agriculture, look for the lowest hanging fruit, look for the, the easiest way for you to get in. And some people started a business with just an Excel sheet, just to be able to generate data. And later they built a data-driven uh, uh, mobile te uh, technology to give to the customers. So it's the simplicity that I want to believe uh, impressed the judges and made us emerge the winner. And as uh, for the process of the IUT, IUT challenge, uh, sincerely to me, I see it as uh, God leading for me to have applied. So I applied on the last day of the application. I, 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 I was, I'd already written some things out. I saved it in draft. And because of activities, I almost forgot. But then I remembered and I quickly applied. And uh, after some weeks, I got that email, that email that I was looking forward to that I hope I get selected. I hope I make it to the to the top 10, that we made it to the top 10. And I can tell it was a rigorous, but I don't see it as rigorous. rigorous. I see it as thorough process because there were a lot of due diligence that went into the, a lot of document, a lot of uh, confirmation that happened within the process for the 10 um, semi-finalists. And uh, after we emerged as uh, one of the top five, the top finalists, that was when the real training started. We were in training for like four weeks and the training was every single day. You are, you are in the train, on the online training or in-person training. And we, we ran through several courses on corporate governance, building a sustainable business, market positioning, customer profiling, business modeling, and the likes of that. And every single of those training were actually needed for myself and my team members that joined um, during the training. So it was really worth it. And that's why how rigorous it was made us feel it's more like a blessing because it's worth it. It's what we need at this stage, and uh, it's coming to us for free. We could have paid, uh, um, yes, we could have paid INF for, for to get to get something a consultant to do that for us, but we got it for free. Then uh, the training process also took in one-on-one um, -on -one mentoring sessions where they were specific, so we can we can run general training for other for finalists, but there are specifics that talk about what does your business need at the moment and. How do you think you know we can properly structure and work with you? And how do you build a business plan that is robust, that is practical, that is bankable, and you know help you scale beyond this this price? You know you need bigger investment to be able to scale. So they are like preparing you for the future that they see ahead of you. And so much, so much has been worth it. Okay, so importantly, we we did our first um, IUT Africa Challenge for the Africa region. Um, just last year, and some of the two major winners that came out of that, one, it's Hello Tractor. So Hello Tractor is uh, a technology-based company that makes um, tractor services um, more available to smallholder farmers in remote and rural areas. Through our partnership with them, we've been able to introduce more tractors to, to tractor owners that are closer to smallholder farmers to be able to get them access to mechanization. We talked about Nigeria being locked in on the performance when it comes to productivity level. If we can get mechanization alone into that space, we can increase tremendously productivity level among smallholder farmers. Farmers can now get to cultivate the same amount of land 40 times faster compared to using uh, manual labor. They can pay almost 2.5% uh, less the cost that they will have paid for manual labor to do the same land the tractor will help them um, um, fulfill. 
the yield of those farmers can increase by more than 50% by those assessing tractors alone. So that's a huge transformation that we're having within that space. And so far, we've been able to get uh, to our collaboration with Hello Tractor. Within last year and now, more than 100 tractors are out there that have been on injecting the system and not just giving tractors out there. Because in the past, similar program has failed because they didn't train the other support services that's required to keep those tractors or those programs to extend beyond that time. We're training technicians that can be in rural and remote areas to be able to service um, or maintain those tractors for the smallholder farmers so they can live longer and be able to perform those operations for those people. We're training you that are becoming booking agents. So they book, uh, aggregate um, demand for tractor services in, in remote, rural areas and get the tractors through app to be, to, be, to be booked to come on the locations and come and service those smallholder farmers within that space. Another one is Cold Hub. So Cold Hub is a young man that's, that's designed a solar-powered cold storage system. post harvest loss cost farmers about 40 to 60% of their income because, for instance, in tomato value chain, where they don't have access to post harvest storage system uh, to keep or increase the shelf life of the tomatoes. So this young man has designed a cold up um, solution where you can use solar power to power it in remote areas. We know how, how challenging it is to access power in the country today. So clean, renewable energy is being used to provide post harvest um, loss solution to farmers to reduce that within the, the space by having cold storage services. So we, we worked with cold hubs um, to, to deploy about 10 different solar powered cold storage systems in clusters and close to rural women and also close to markets where, farm, where people are actually selling uh, produce that are perishable and they can use that cold storage to extend the shelf life. And a new one that we just did uh, recently, the IUT challenge for Nigeria, we have some innovative um, solutions that came out of that. Um, and one of the, the winner we just talked to, Ife Lua, uh, is actually trying to solve the issue of getting farmers to assess premium market by reducing how much money that the middlemen take away from smallholder farmers. Automatically, that will increase the income level and the margin that smallholder farmers can get and let them get the right kind of premium they deserve for what they produce and bring those kind of incomes back to the smallholder farmers and against those that take advantage of them along the value chain line. <music>